You've seen the schedule. So let's not waste each other's time here because we don't have a lot of time doing the hard stuff that we need to do to get to where we want to go. This is about winning. It's about winning the world championship, period. It's time for another edition of the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy inside the Globe Life studio here at the Star in Frisco. Bill Jones along with Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy as the Cowboys get set to take on the Denver Broncos, a noon kickoff at AT&T Stadium after getting win number six in a row last Sunday night against the Minnesota Vikings. Let's kick things off. Coach, talk about these Broncos a little bit. Coach Vic Fangio on the other side, a guy you're very familiar with from his time when he was a defensive coordinator in San Francisco and Chicago, you've met up with him quite a bit in the past. What do you expect out of a Fangio team? Well, I mean, I'll say this. Uh, Vic, is old, he's old school. I mean, his, his defenses have always played the same. He has a very sound system. You can see the carryover to the West Coast offense emphasis that they run on, on their offense. But uh, tough, physical. Uh, they got some excellent playmakers. Uh, this will be a battle for us Sunday at noon. Well, uh, last Sunday night, uh, the win against Minnesota, it was a consummate team win. When you talk about complimentary football, of course, with your quarterback out, with Dak Prescott, Cooper Rush plays uh, so well. Uh, what, were, what are you most proud of, of your team uh, coming out of that game? Uh, just the ability to fight through the adversity situations. You know, we, the ball didn't bounce our way a number of times. We just kept playing, uh, had to over, overcome the penalties and, you know, some of the holes that we put ourselves in, you know, we did, we were minus two in a turnover differential, but you know, just the productivity of our football team and just the way they keep battling and just the way they stay so composed on the sideline, uh, the in-game adjustments, uh, just really like the way we're finding ways to win and, and, and able to take that confidence and build off it each week. And uh, Cooper Rush, a great example of that, and, and came through in the clutch when you needed it with the two-minute offense in the, down the stretch. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just so excited for Cooper for, you know, his, obviously his first opportunity. Uh, you know, he's put so much into this, but, you know, it really didn't change anything. I mean, Kellen Moore just, you know, we stuck with the game plan. Uh, Cooper did a good job, you know, throughout the evening, and then when it, when it was clutch, uh, he made the right decision, made the throws in that final drive. All right, D Dak back at practice this week. Uh, but I I'd like to talk about the way Dak uh, performed last week in, in a role where he is helping out. He is engaged even though he's not playing in the game. I thought it was a great illustration for anyone out there who might be a starting player on a high school team or whatever. And if you're going through an injury and how you support your teammates, Dak, that leadership just shined through loud and clear on Sunday night. You know, the, the, the thing about Dak is he's the same – the same person every single day uh, regardless of the situation and, and I think that emulates you know what we're talking about uh, you know just you know throughout the particularly the end of the week uh, when, when you know when things were looking like it could go one way or the other um, just just you know stayed into the into the game plan process of it was you know very supportive of Cooper when when it, when it became his opportunity and you saw it on the sidelines I mean he was into the game just as if he was playing and and that's what the backup quarterbacks do you know it's it's a it, they're a unit you know they spend a tremendous amount of time together uh, there's a lot of conversations that go on weekly uh, things that go on you know the other you know other positions don't even talk about so uh, I, I thought he did a tremendous job all right uh, Tyron Smith uh, dealing with that uh, ankle issue right now uh, your boy Terrence Steele has played now you got Lyle Collins back how do you look at things at the tackle position right now well you know we're just uh, repping them throughout the week and then you know we'll line up you know line up uh, Sunday with the you know with one at one tackle one at the <laughs> other so it's no it, it, uh, we're very fortunate to have you know the flexibility that we do have available to us you know with Tyron's injury so um, I'm looking forward to the challenge. All right. It should be interesting on Sunday. We're just getting started on this edition of the Mike McCarthy Show. Up next, it's David Moore of the Dallas Morning News. It was, it was challenging, but I embraced it. I um, was able just to support the guys. Some, uh, some Coach McCarthy talks about it, support the 48. Uh, and that was my job. So, I mean, whether it was stuff that I was seeing on the field, um, maybe helping Kellen here or there with a call or something that, that I may see or that I may like in that time, and then just being able to uh, talk to Coop and um, help him out, I think uh, it was great. And not just him, the receivers, and just the whole team. Um, I don't know if I'm normally that active or able to talk to the defense and um, be as – be as vocal with everybody uh, when I'm playing. So I think that was fun in a sense. But, uh, yeah, something I don't, I don't want to get used to for sure. The Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, is brought to you by AT&T. Ford, built for Texas, built for you. The University of North Texas, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, 
the only beer of the Cowboys. It's Miller time. And by Reliant, an NRG company. This segment is brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. Like I feel like it's like a stepping stone of what I could be capable of. Uh, I just got to be consistent and keep working hard. But it shows what I can do on a weekly basis. I just got to keep doing it. Welcome back to the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy, inside the Globe Life studio here at the Star. Bill Jones now joined by David Moore of the Dallas Morning News, SportsDayDFW.com. How about we talk about the NFC Rookie or Defensive Player of the Week? I said rookie because but I'm going to segue into <laughs> he's going to be your Rookie of the Year. He's making strides. Micah Parsons, what a game last week. It really was. And, and you know, I thought he came – there were a couple of games where he wasn't happy with how he performed either. And, and he spoke last week going into the Minnesota game about how he was bothered by that, how he started showing up earlier – um, at the star. In fact, uh, Dan Quinn was telling a story. He said, you know, I get here pretty early and I turned over and there was Micah and he's like, well, hey, good, good to see you. So he started showing up at the star about a, an hour, hour and a half earlier than normal. Uh, and he also said he started to use his time better than when he was out here. Uh, he, he loved playing the uh, hamper basketball games in the locker room. He even uh, put those to the side going into last week. Uh, and and I, you saw, I mean, he was uh, better prepared. He felt better about where he was. He was dominant in that game, just completely, utterly dominant. And, and it reminded me coming out of that game that, one, the expectations for him – and, you know, he didn't have a chance to play linebacker a lot early because after Demarcus Lawrence went out, uh, they, they used him in a different role. But I started flashing back to 2016 and thinking what uh, Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs have done this year, I think is really reminiscent of what Ezekiel Elliott and Dak Prescott did in 2016. Just the joy, the passion, the enthusiasm for the job, and the level of performance that, that really makes the team better, and, and how you had a different feel for that team. I think, I, say, I think the same thing is going on this season with Micah and Trayvon Diggs, how they're performing back in what we saw in 2016. It, it really energizes the rest of the team. It does. All right, uh, the home field seems to be a little more energized here for this Cowboys team right now. Yeah, and it's not just, it's not just the three games earlier this season. You go back to the end of last season, um, Dallas has now won five straight at AT&T Stadium. They're averaging 39.8 points, and they're winning those games by 16 and a half points. And, uh, you know, Dallas has been okay at home for a long time, but it hasn't really been a dominant venue for them. Uh, Mike McCarthy has made that an emphasis, and this team has responded in that so far. Uh, this is the first game at AT&T in nearly a month, and now uh, two straight and three of the next four will be at home. Uh, they've, they've already had discussions about we have something good rolling at home here. We need to keep this up. Yep, and uh, they would like home field advantage in the playoffs. Not to get too far not ahead. Not to get too far ahead, but we can do that. <laughs> yes. They can't, but we can. That's right, and Aaron Rodgers not playing for the Packers. I mean, you can start gaining some ground in a hurry here if they take advantage of the home field advantage they have on the schedule the next few weeks. David Moore, we appreciate it. And up next here on the Mike McCarthy Show, a trip to the film room with Will McClay and Isaiah Standback. This segment was brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. This segment is brought to you by Windstar World Casino and Resort, the casino of the Dallas Cowboys. The Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy, continues now as I am joined by Will McClay as we break out the Telestrator and take an up-close look at a couple of rookies on this uh, Broncos team. We start on the defensive side of the football. Patrick Sertan, the second out of Alabama. Yeah, good corner. Uh, one of the guys we were looking at because he is ready to play in the NFL. We'll show it here. We're going to show him highlighting and press coverage. Difficult thing for college corners to do coming to the NFL. He's against Jarvis Landry. You show him here, and what you're going to show is using that length to force him wide, and that makes a tighter window throw. They try and hit him on the back th shoulder. He knows how to anticipate that. All right, there he is against Cleveland. Here he is against Jacksonville. All right, going to look at him in another coverage. Now he's going to play off bail coverage. He's got to bail, turn his eyes to the quarterback, feel the receiver, and then he's got to find the ball. 
All right, so you see him here. Now he breaks and opens his hips, sees the quarterback, sees him throwing it, squeezes the receiver to the sideline, then makes a play on the ball. Impressive stuff. And he's a prototype guy, not only when it comes to the passing game, but also in the run game, right? Uh, atypical because corners don't like to tackle, <laughs> but one of the things that made him a first-round pick is his ability to do this. All right, you'll see here they're going to motion. They're going to try and set the defense, kind of see what they're doing here. All right, the quarterback checks. All right, now they're going to run a run play. The back is going to see it. Now he's going to bounce it outside. They think they got it. That's Jacobs. That's college teammates, and it's a great tackle, again, on a big running back. All right, on the offensive side of the football, running back to look for you. Of course, they got Melvin Gordon, but also the rookie, Javante Williams, second-round draft pick out of North Carolina. He's pretty impressive. Averaging four, yard, four and a half yards of carry. He's got 20 catches. He's a unique player in the, in, with his quickness and his strength. We're going to look at him here. He, watch his feet here to set the, set the block, and then contact balance is what we talk about. How many people can he maintain his contact, his balance, when people hitting him? That's seven people. Yeah, we, we numbered it off there. Seven different defenders uh, hit him on that one. All right, and sometimes you got to create on your own as a running back. So we'll have it here. It's going to be an inside run. The Ravens do a great job of cutting it off. The safety comes down. He breaks that tackle now. Let's see how many it takes to bring him down. Again, it's going to be an all-day affair. There's six, seven guys. <laughs> so seven twice there for Javante Williams. This is impressive stuff. Okay. Not only do, can you run it inside and break tackles, but it's the speed and juice to go outside. So here we're going to see here. They're going to block it all off. There's Now, where's the edge of the defense? He sets up the defense, and then it's him in the corner. The corner misses. Now he's out on the perimeter, and whoop, whoop. Whoa. I don't remember what his vertical was, but that was pretty impressive right there. Impressive young player. It's two young players that they count on on this, on this uh, offense and defense. All right, let's hear what the Cowboys players are saying about this matchup with the Broncos. Really just do what we do. Um, be technically sound. Uh, focus on the details. Attack what we're doing. Um, you know, obviously study film and get get to know them because they're an uncommon opponent. Um, you know, they're in the AFC, so studying them, getting a feel for them, but really ultimately focusing on us and making sure our game's right. Because uh, once that's done, I mean, shoot, we can play with anyone. Yeah, I mean, in a sense of the way the, the – uh the way the defense is schemed, the way that they're going to play top down, uh, trying to show things late, uh, get, into their, get into their coverages um, in, a, in a different way, I guess, not just showing you right off the bat. Um, so, yeah, obviously you, we watch that and take things from it. But in a sense, this team's had six, seven games. So, I mean, we've got a lot of film to just watch on them and stay focused on who we're playing. And I'm now joined by Isaiah Stanback as he's got his telestrator out now to break down Cowboys versus Dolphins when Dallas is on offense against this number two score scoring defense in the league in the Broncos. Yeah, the Broncos have a pretty good defense. Um, they just lost one of their intricate pieces, though, in Von <laughs> Miller. So their front seven is a little bit compromised. So where's the strength of their defense? It's in their secondary. They have a brand new draft pick and a nice little shiny toy yep. and, and Sertan. And then they also have Fuller. Uh, you'll see Sertan down here at the bottom. He does a great job of sticking this route here. And I'm going to draw it up for you, okay? What you're going to have here is a nice little corner route. He's going to be simply clearing things out. On the on the back side, you're going to have a swing route, okay? Right after that, you guys are going to have somebody running on a shallow, okay? You're going to have somebody else running on a shallow. But this man right here is who I want you guys to watch. He's going to be trying to set a pick on this man right here. As he's coming across trying to shadow, shadow this man, he's going to get picked off, which is going to open up a nice little thing on the back side here. Let's go ahead and play it out so you guys can see it. It's a great opportunity for us to exploit their confidence Boom, pause it right there. You guys see it. Perfect right here. All right, he's setting that pick. He really can't set a pick in the league, but he is running his route right along the backside here, which opens things up for him to come out the backside whenever they choose to play. Man, you guys see Sertan's doing a great job here sticking this man. Great coverage. Great coverage right here. So they eliminate their two with their best two. But guess what? We have four deep, and it's not going to allow them to be able to play the defense that they want. Right out the backside there, you got the whole sideline to run. If they decide to try to play us in man coverage, we have the personnel to combat their strength, which gives us opportunity to go ahead and have victory over these guys. Well, and it is strength against strength right there. But as you say, Isaiah, Cowboys got some numbers outside at the wide receiver position. Thank you, Isaiah. Stand back, and the coach rejoins us in just a moment here on the Mike McCarthy. 
The Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy, continues now here inside the Globe Life studio as the Coach Reed joins us here. Let's uh, talk about your defense a little bit, and how about we talk about one Micah Parsons. Uh, Micah, of course, the NFC Defensive Player of the Week after last week's performance. He was all over the field. Uh, 11 tackles, 10 solo, uh, four tackles for loss. He wanted that ball carrier. He, he was winning the race to the ball carrier on virtually every play, it seemed like to me. Oh, definitely. I, I think the way he, you know, he re, you know, he, way he reads and reacts, but his ability to slip blocks is uncanny. So has great range. Um, you know, I thought he had his best week of preparation, through, you know, this year, and it, it, was, it was great to see him rewarded accordingly. So just a fine performance. Uh, impact player. I mean, uh, just very blessed and fortunate to have him. All right. And, and then how about Randy Gregory? I mean, when the game is on the line, now there were the penalties on the one drive, but you could tell he was fired up to make a play, in which he did. Of course, he had a sack earlier in the game. Uh, if you could speak just a little bit about Randy. And, and when you get when he gets a burr in his saddle, there's not much stopping Randy Gregory out there. I, I tell you what I love about Randy. He always has a burr in his saddle. <laughs> I mean, he's so disruptive. Uh, just playing at an incredible level right now. Just, you know, some of our past opponents and, and people, you know, coaches that you know on those teams, he's the first guy that they bring up. I mean, he's, uh, he's having a great year. You know, just so proud of him and just the way he's, he's growing, you know, throughout this opportunity. But, uh, yeah, he was – so impactful, especially at key moments. You look at this Broncos offense. There's some talent on that offense. Let's start at the wide receiver position. There's some there's some big wide receivers. You got a 6'4 Cortland Sutton out of SMU. Of course, you got Jerry Judy as a first round pick last year, and Tim Patrick, another 6'4 guy. And I haven't got into the tight ends yet. Yeah. Oh no, definitely. They're like a basketball team. They remind me a little bit of the Chargers team we played early in the season. So. Uh, this is going to be a huge challenge for us in, in, with our perimeter, and uh, you know we're anticipate a lot of contested catches. So, uh, it'll be, you know, frankly, hopefully, I think it gives us an opportunity to get our hands on some balls. And uh, Bridgewater doing a good job uh, taking care of the football. I'm very impressed with Javante Williams. Uh, Will McClay talked about him a little bit earlier in the show. The athleticism the rookie running back out of North Carolina has. Oh, definitely, man. He breaks tackles. Got good vision. You know, and just the way you know his pad level and you know his uh, knee drive and. Uh, you know, he's he, he's very impressive. I mean, their one-two punch in the run game is is definitely a focal point for us. Okay, uh, your secondary, we've talked a lot this season, of course, and rightly so, about Trayvon Diggs. But I want to bring up Jordan Lewis. Uh, and the way Jordan not only played last week, uh, but throughout the season, uh, it's been really impressive uh, to see uh, his development over time, but he's really a steady guy in your secondary. Oh, definitely. I mean, I, I just love the way J. Lou comes to work every day. I mean, he's just a... He's a fireball. He's intense. He's got a great personality. So, I mean, it just, you know, he's really taking command of that nickel spot. Um, you know, I, I'm going to say the last four or five game stretch here, he's, he's just playing lights out football. All right, we wrap up this edition of the Mike McCarthy Show in just a moment. Definitely a top five play of my career. Uh, definitely proud. Um, Shoot, it's my job, it's what I'm supposed to go do. Final minute or so of the Mike McCarthy Show powered by Reliant Energy inside the Globe Life studio here at the Star. Bill Jones with the coach to wrap things up as we get you set for Cowboys and Broncos. But in this segment, normally, coach, I talk about an unsung star. Get you to talk about an unsung star from the previous game. I want this is an unsung play, not probably in your eyes, but it wasn't on the highlight reels. We're showing the touchdown pass to win the game. The play before the touchdown pass, Zeke Elliott catches that ball, and it was going to be difficult for him him to get a first down but Zeke found a way to get the first down I thought that was one of the plays of the game huge play big play Could, you know easily make the case that that was the biggest play of the football game you know the big plays that we made in the second half were, were you know we needed them especially to overcome some of the situations but when you look at Zeke on that play I mean defensively they're, in, they're playing zone with vision he splits two and splits the second two so I mean he really breaks four tackles on that particular play that puts us in position for the touchdown. Okay, uh, you're back home playing against the Broncos, and you've done a pretty good job, even going to the end of last year, establishing a little home field advantage here. How, how big is that? It's huge. I mean, it's a phenomenal environment. We need to take, take advantage of it. I mean, there's nothing like AT&T field in, in, 
you know, our crowds have been uh, unbelievable. It's a noon start, so we start got to early. Get, get up fast and get going. So, you know, <laughs> I'm talking to the fans. So, uh, no, it's, you know, it's a big part of being successful in this league each and every year. you got to win those home games. And, uh, of course, uh, three of the next four at home, including the next two, Denver this week, Atlanta next week. Coach, good luck against those uh, Broncos, and we will see you again next week on the Mike McCarthy Show. The Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, was brought to you by... Ford, built for Texas, built for you. Bank of America, the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. It's Miller time. Geico, switch today and see all the ways you could save. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl.